Thank you. Uh, ten minute rounds. Except I may have more questions because I have budget questions I have to ask. Um, but I am going to start with this. I think you touched on this, uh, Ms. McCarthy, in your testimony, um, in your written statement. But you were present. I appreciate that you were present when other witnesses were testifying. And I highlighted a few of the remarks that were made. Um, one witness, the bottom line is that OP consistently misrepresents its proposals. Another witness, the city council should impose sanctions and funding limits on OP until it demonstrates respect through the budget process to create an open ZRR rewrite process. It's time for the city council to change OP's actions and orientations. Culture from favoring the developers to heed the concerns of residents and to make governmental agencies accountable for their actions. Uh, another witness, the planning, zoning, and economic development agencies no longer work for the public good. They run interference for the development community. Another witness, OP also has ignored repeated requests. Uh, and OP certainly has refused to provide meaningful answers. And that one went on. Um, as I said at the last hearing, the uh, oversight hearing, the, um, I think OP has kind of dug itself into a hole with regard to trust from the community. How do you plan to fix that? Well, I'd say two answers to that. Number one, that the kinds of comments that have been made are what has driven us to, as I indicated, as part of our efforts to get ready for the amendments to the comprehensive plan. We plan to follow up on the internal assessment of what we've done right and wrong by an extensive process of just consulting the citizen leaders, council members, ANSI commissioners, everybody that uh, has a stake in the future of the district and has interacted with us. We'd like to get frank comments about what, what, we have, what we should have done differently, what we could do differently in the future. I think the comp plan amendment cycle is a great time to step back and, uh, and to do that. I, I think there had been generally a feeling that the first time around in the comp plan, the Office of Planning had done an extensive job of outreach and we'd, we'd like to go back and see what was different about then as, as opposed to now. Um, I think I would also add, um, uh, Richard Lehman did a very interesting piece recently in his blog in which he was pointing out that the problem with being a municipal planner is that you, you need to interact with the citizens who are obviously concerned with what's going on in their particular neighborhood. But as a municipal planner, you've also got to encompass the needs of the entire city. Uh, the accessory dwelling units is a good example of that. The Office of Planning has received a lot of criticism about including proposals in the current uh, uh, ZRR for permitting people to create accessory dwelling units within their houses as a matter of right, so long as the house is at least 2,000 square feet, the accessory dwelling unit takes up no more than 25% of the house, uh, the owner of the property remains living either in the main house or in the accessory dwelling unit. That's a response to a citywide need for an increase in affordable housing and for the fact that we do have an aging population, many of them with houses that they are finding difficult to meet the tax burden, even with the relief that Councilmember Bond's uh, legislation has provided. Um, so being able to put accessory dwelling units in your property is a way of helping to increase the affordability of the, of the property to older homeowners um, at minimal impact on the surrounding neighborhoods um, and uh, in, a, in a way that, um, well, that encompasses important affordable housing needs one of many, you know, there's, there's no one silver bullet out there for affordable housing. We've got to take many different arrows in the quiver, whether it's inclusionary zoning or um, how we don't, redevelop city-owned Don't, don't property. get away from my question, which had to do with exactly. rebuilding trust. I'm sorry, I didn't ask about affordable housing. Yes. So, so there are many important citywide objectives as to why we've recommended that. 
there have been a, a whole set of citizen complaints. I know you've heard them as well and responded to some of them at our oversight hearing, I think the, a year ago. Um, it's, a, it's an important citywide priority. Sometimes when you are a citizen of a neighborhood and you're looking at your own neighborhood concerns, you perceive the Office of Planning's desire to also accommodate citywide concerns as not listening to you. And clearly we need to do a better job of explaining the, the two different objectives, the two different needs that we're trying to, to serve. And I'm, I'm thinking that the, the comments that you, we've received um, that you've heard today and other times is an indication that maybe we need to do a better job of explaining that tension between neighborhood versus citywide needs. But you do recognize it as an issue you have to deal with. I definitely recognize it as an issue. Uh, what's your timeline for updating the comprehensive plan? Uh, we, we are starting the stakeholder engagement activities and advertising and outreach this fall. Can you be more specific than this fall? Um, by September. And then um, do you have any dates following that? Dates following that for the next set of actions. Yeah, the process for updating the comprehensive plan. Ms. Huey? Yes, Chairman Mendelson. Um, our current plan is that we would start, we, we would start with significant community outreach, explaining this amendment cycle, the type of amendments we're looking to receive. Um, we, that will be ongoing for the fall. Um, at such time, we will then start accepting amendment proposals throughout the fall and probably until late winter, February timeframe. Then we would need a period of time to analyze those amendments before submitting them to the council, which we anticipate late spring or summer of next year. Of uh, submitting to the council. What does late spring mean? I'm sorry, what does late spring mean? Yes, you said um, submitting to the council late spring. Yeah, so we anticipate submitting the amendment package, the proposals, um, to the City Council late spring or summer of next year. Depending upon the number of amendments we get, during the last amendment cycle we received over 200 amendments, so it takes significant amount of staff time to review, uh, to coordinate with other agencies. So it's kind of hard to actually nail down specific dates, but that's, that's our timeline at this point. Okay, well, late spring is, probably means um, May. May or June. And May is we're still caught up in the budget. And uh, summer could mean July and we're on recess. Just saying. Okay. Um, we'll try to hit the right window. I'm a little bit confused about your budget. Uh, on page three of your testimony, you 